We ask scientists and engineers to develop a machine that soaks up carbon from the atmosphere. A device that would lock up CO2 for potentially quite a long time. It would have to be environmentally friendly, of course, efficient, reliable, easy and cheap to produce. Here's what they came up with. Trees and forests play a crucial role in regulating our climate. Through photosynthesis, they remove carbon from the atmosphere as they grow, binding CO2 and storing it as carbon. The carbon is held in the forest biomass, in the trunks, branches, foliage and roots and as organic carbon in the soil. The process is constant and is going on all around us. In young forests, carbon is soaked up or sequestered quickly, while in mature forests, sequestration eventually equals decomposition and the carbon balance reaches a steady state. At this point, the forest doesn't absorb any more carbon, but it has become a vast carbon reservoir. But if the trees are destroyed, they release carbon back to the atmosphere, thus becoming a source of greenhouse gas emissions. However, when they grow back or are replanted, the cycle starts all over again and the new trees absorb more carbon. Forests cover just under 4 billion hectares of the world's surface. That's almost one third of our total land area. They account for 90% of the annual interchange of carbon between the atmosphere and the land. The amount of carbon stored in these ecosystems is the equivalent of around 4,500 gigatons of CO2. That's more than the total carbon contained in all of the world's remaining oil stocks. More, in fact, than the total amount of carbon in the atmosphere itself. So it's no surprise that forests can be a big part of the answer to the problem of climate change. But we're not looking after them. 8,000 years ago, half of the Earth's land surface was covered by forest. Today, that's down to less than a third. Since 1850, deforestation has released around 120 gigatons of carbon into the atmosphere. the world is still losing forests at an alarming rate. Between 1990 and 2005, around 13 million hectares of forests were lost every year. That's an area roughly equivalent to the size of Greece. Tropical countries are most vulnerable. South America suffered the largest net loss of forests from 2000 to 2005, about 4.3 million hectares every year. This was followed by Africa, which lost 4 million hectares per year. The main cause of deforestation was conversion to agriculture, large scale in Latin America, small scale in Africa, and a mix in Asia. Added to this, all regions suffer forest degradation from causes that include overharvesting or poor harvesting practices overgrazing and forest fires, to name a few. It's a grim statistic, but the forest sector accounts for nearly one-fifth of all the world's greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than the emissions from every car, every boat, every plane in the world. More than the whole of the world's transport sector put together. Most of this is due to deforestation, but some also to forest degradation. But experience in some regions shows that the tide can be turned. Large areas of European and North American forest were cleared centuries ago. In these regions, forest cover is now increasing. 
Asia, which had a net loss of some 800,000 hectares a year in the 1990s, reported a net gain of 1 million hectares a year from 2000 to 2005, primarily as a result of large-scale afforestation by China. Countries are increasing their efforts to conserve forests and manage them sustainably. This is vital not only to regulate our climate, but also because forests provide flood protection, erosion control, timber and other products. They are essential for the planet's biodiversity. Two out of three living species depend on our forests. And forests are also important for sustaining livelihoods. About 450 million people worldwide live off the forest. The loss of forests affects everyone, particularly the world's poorest people.